A federal judge in Texas has ruled that employers cannot be required to cover key preventative health care benefits under the Affordable Care Act. It jeopardizes free coverage of a wide range of services for some 160 million Americans. The Biden administration is expected to request a stay on the ruling. Larry Levitt is the executive vice president for health policy at the Kaiser Family Foundation and joins us now. Mr. Levitt, welcome and thanks for joining us. Just to set the table here, this ruling stems from a case brought by Christian-owned businesses and some others who argued they shouldn't have to cover HIV PrEP, which is a pre-exposure prophylaxis. But what does this mean more broadly in terms of the implications? Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, this uh, this decision is not as, as broad as some of the other legal challenges we've seen to the Affordable Care Act. I mean, this decision does not threaten the very existence of Obamacare, uh, you know, the, the subsidies that make coverage more affordable, pre-existing condition protections. Uh, on the other hand, this is a very significant decision. Uh, 100 million people in a typical year use the preventive services that the Affordable Care Act requires uh, and requires insurers to provide with, with no deductibles and no co-pays. Um, the judge's decision does not throw out all of those preventive services, uh, but it's, it's very significant and, and will affect millions of people over time. When you're talking about those preventative services and screenings, give us some examples. What, what kinds of things are we talking about here? Yeah, so, so the kind of preventive services that the ACA requires are very broad. I mean, it's cancer screenings, it's contraception, uh, it's screenings for depression and, and anxiety. Um, it, it, many of those will actually stay because what this ruling does is says that any preventive services that were added uh, after 2010, when the Affordable Care Act passed, are the ones that are thrown out. Uh, so those will, the ones that will no longer or could no longer be covered by insurers include um, uh, PrEP, as you mentioned, uh, medication that prevents HIV, uh, statins that lower cholesterol and help prevent heart disease, medications that help reduce the risk of, of breast cancer, lung cancer screening. Um, so a narrower set of services than, than many people are getting, but still quite significant and for many people's lives. So insurers can either just drop coverage for those kinds of services and screenings altogether or start charging enrollees for those. What do you expect to happen? I, uh, first of all, I don't think anything will happen immediately because we're in the mil middle of the calendar year and many insurance contracts are, are still in place. But come next year, I think insurers will, will look at uh, this ruling if, if it stands, if, if the Biden administration does not successfully get a stay. Uh, insurers will look at it and, and make some decisions. I, I suspect they will still cover these services, uh, but many of them will be subject to deductibles or co-pays, which could be quite expensive for patients. We should point out the judge in this case basically ruled the government can't force employers to provide some of the services because the task force that determined which should be covered wasn't, wasn't, was comprised of medical advisors, not government employees. We, we mentioned that we expect the Biden administration to appeal. So what happens next? Walk us through the timeline. Yeah, so the, the first step will be an appeal to try to get a stay because this judge uh, in, in Texas uh, not only said that the preventive services requirement doesn't apply to these employers, these religious employers in, in Texas, uh, or even just in Texas, but applies nationwide. So the Biden administration will certainly push for a stay. And then this would go to the Court of Appeals uh, in that, that region, which is a pretty conservative court and, and most likely ultimately to, to the Supreme Court. We've got about a minute and a half or so left. I have to ask you more broadly. It was just a week ago the White House was celebrating 13 years of the Affordable Care Act and record high open enrollment numbers. This was, as you mentioned, a narrow, but it was a key provision of the ACA. What does all of this tell you about the future of the Affordable Care Act? Yeah, I mean, this is an enormously popular provision of the ACA. I mean, this is not something that's controversial, like uh, you know, the individual mandate that, that required people uh, to get insured or, or pay a penalty or the employer mandate. Uh, this was extremely popular. Uh, and you're right. I mean, the politics around the Affordable Care Act have, have really changed. I mean, we're 13 years in. Uh, the Biden administration has really reinvigorated the, the Affordable Care Act after the Trump administration tried to, to weaken it. There's record enrollment. There's record low uninsured rate uh, now in the United States. Uh, and, you know, Republicans really are not publicly talking about repealing the ACA anymore. Uh, but this ruling potentially puts, puts them on the hot seat.
We'll be watching all of this unfold in the weeks and months ahead. Larry Levitt, Executive Vice President for Health Policy at the Kaiser Family Foundation. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me.